after uh, Miss Garland sets this up okay, here. Also, you're recording in your live stream. Oh, okay, wonderful. Um, but in order to get the lights okay. If you're trying to hook up to Zoom, you need to make sure you go to your settings and look up the Wi Fi and select. City Public, are you going to try to? She's trying to get. I did. It's not. It's not anymore. Okay. I can unplug it and see the reset. This is the like. This is the YouTuber. What is this called? Oh, this is the same thing. All right. So it's on. So we'll see if it comes back. Okay, thank you. Does Jennifer Penford, do you have it on yours? Um, Are you getting any Wi-Fi on yours? Because you've at least Jennifer's been in it before, so she, she may have it before. <laughs> Anywhere you wish. People are just choosing. Well, this this section is, and then we have some members of the audience today. Oh, We're very lucky. And you can grab, if you don't have an agenda, there's some materials down there. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking city public's just not working. Okay. Easier for the public to grab. Oh, uh, the agenda you can grab. And then if there are leftovers for the chart, you can. So if you want to join Zoom, the instructions are the last page there. We have a little bit of a challenge technologically today. Wait, so you said that projector doesn't work? The lamp broke. Oh, just oh, today we noticed it. So how will people not do this? It's recorded on Zoom. The live stream will work if anybody was live streaming. You will see the presentation because oh, that's from there. I, but I just can't project it to all of you in here. Okay. But if you zoom, when you hit the Zoom, if you're able to get in Zoom, you'll see oh, it just like you want to zoom in. Yeah. Because it's all in that. <laughs> I need to be a very big person to Will that this. be able to be posted uh, as a video people can access later or no? It's always going to be. Okay. Lots well, of room underneath to put your stuff. It's what? Yeah, there's always lots of room underneath to put your stuff. I mean, it's always going to be there. It's, all right. It's all right. And it's also recorded. So, it's a different order. You weren't able to get in? Uh, no. Michelle, yeah. I just got back into town and um, so I did not fill out your questionnaire. I only read it this morning. Oh, that's fine. So, I apologize. No problem. Guess what? If you, I'm pretty sure if you want to add your response, you can. Yeah, yeah, if you still got the link. <laughs> oh, okay, do it on the link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've actually spent the day thinking about it. I know, um, I know Elizabeth's anyone... coming from Peru, so I guess we'll we'll try to wait a little bit. Is there anyone who wants mint, peppermint, or strawberry plants? I just mm -hmm. strawberry what? Strawberry. Strawberry plants. Oh, I just ripped out a ton. Wow. Maybe I'll come by your house. She lives right around on, on the same blade oh. block as my daughter. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's great. I saw and then Jackie brought. See that box over there? She brought some milkweed plants that she ordered to attract the butterfly. To attract the monarchs. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for Thank that. Thank you. Oh, actually, I've got a great place for them. I'm wondering some. if anybody else is on Zoom. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Talk to me. I'm here. Can you okay. hear me? Oh, Kurt's here. Kurt is here on Zoom. Normally, he would be projected, um, but unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. I wish I knew where the volume was on So do you think we should do you think we should start Kurt? Sure. Okay. I think so. I uh, I'm speaking to Kurt Gervich, who's another one of our task force members who's in California and he's attending by Zoom. Normally we'd be able to, I think I already said that, but we'd be able to see him too. Uh, so I'm going to call the meeting to order, and we do have pretty hefty agenda, and so I, um, I'd like to take this time 
for everybody to just to go around and give your names. And then I have a little compl co compilation of some of the responses you made to the questionnaire. So why don't we start with Susan? I'm Susan Kelly. I'm Diana Wardell. I'm Jennifer Wardell. I'm Jennifer Wardell. My name's Erin Griffin. I'm the Climate Smart Community Coordinator for the North Country. Uh, my name is Maxwell Schaefer. I'm a student at Plattsburgh High School and the president of the PHS Green Team. Rochelle Armstrong, coordinator of the task force. I'm Jennifer Tallon. I am city councilor for Ward 4. My name is Loretta Ritsema, and I'm a longtime um, Plattsburgh resident. And here we have Councilor Gibbs joining us. Whatever you want. People are, people are kind of choosing. <laughs> so, Councillor Gibbs is here, and now I'm going to bring up a part of the survey. If you have your um, devices open, uh, you can see this on the Zoom screen. Um, let me see, I need my agenda, sorry. This was all going to be so technologically beautiful for you to be able to see it on the uh, screen, but uh, anyway. <laughs> so what comes to mind uh, if you think of our city assets? Raise your hand if you have them on a screen. So I'll just need to read them aloud. So we're a small town and can act decisively to combat challenges. We have a strong sense of community, which can and should help to make the transition to a climate smart policy, a democratic collective effort. We have connections to small organic farms, natural beauty. It's a good place to raise kids. And we have growing community connect, uh, connections and networks. Uh, a small area, college and medical facilities, and citizens care about their city. Our natural beauty, sense of community, local businesses are an asset. Our location and many places to enjoy, access, uh, we can access the lake, parks, and city beach. We're becoming more bicycle and pedestrian friendly, becoming more arts focused with the strand uh, center, art spaces, outdoor art, and city services. Police, fire, P PMLD, water and sewer. I know we've got the basics. That's great. Excellent public schools, growing away of array of restaurants, coffee shops, SUNY Plattsburgh and its many offerings, lower costs for electricity, important community centers, organizations, YMCA, senior centers, CDPH, churches, museums, recovery meetings, JCEO, especially Head Start. Look how many assets, community interests in creating and adding to activities, concerts, curbside at Harborside last two summers, first Friday festivals, artisan markets, strong theater community, sports community, Overall, a welcomely, a welcoming and relatively safe small city that is competently managed with adequate sense of goodwill among its residents. And then you were asked what kind of skills and abilities or other strengths you bring to the task force. Now, this is an impressive list of skills. We're highly trained. Um, sustainability and climate adaptation, urban planning background, I guess you might guess who this one is, facilitation skills, student energy and interns, grant writing and SUNY resources, and community organizing. With that said, it occurs to me that you couldn't hear Kurt introduce himself. We're very pleased to have Kurt Gervich, Dr. Kurt Gervich from the Environmental Science department at SUNY Plattsburgh, and he's going to help us a lot. We're organized and hardworking, gardening and composting, education professional, commitment and dedication we have, knowledge of the CSC program. We have unique perspectives as students and a knowledgeable base about social policy, public outreach, and, and seeking egalitarian solutions. We're good with people. We uh, have history of sustainability, some of us, 
uh, su sustainability activism, that is. Ability to work with others, knowledge of some local plants, and I can flex my time, this person says. We have strong writing skills, public speaking, and contributor to positive morale, believer in the power of teams, knowledge of community resources, and good communication skills. I think that's it for our um, CSC action. Now, it's really unfortunate that we have no projector because what I, uh, Kurt showed me how to get a bar graph of our um, responses to what actions speak to us. So I'll just have to narrate. Um, uh, four of the nine responses thought that building a climate smart community was a priority. Uh, inventory emission set goals. Decrease, um, that was four people. Shift to clean renewable energy, three people. Use climate smart materials, four people. Implement climate smart land use policies, three people. Enhance community resilience, five people. That's a resounding majority of responses so far. Um, support green innovation and economy, four. Inform and inspire the public, four engage in an evolve, evolving process. And then there was a good deal of overlap when you were asked to think about what actions are most important. So building a climate smart community, which I, I don't know, that, that goal would, seems like an overarching goal that embraces all of the other ones that are listed in the actions, but five people, Inventory emissions and set goals, seven people. Decrease energy use, one person. Shift to clean renewable energy, two. Use climate smart materials, three. Implement climate smart land use, two. Enhance community resilience, four. Support green innovation, economy, three. Inform and inspire the public, four. And engage in evolving process. Now this is all to say that this is our kind of first chance at, after having been exposed to all of the information, which is abundant, you know, these are our, our first ideas. It's kind of like brainstorming together. So, you know, we have a, a variety of interests. We have a ton of skills, and I can really see the potential for this task force to absolutely take off and and get a great deal done. So, and I really thank you. The city thanks you, I know, for your willingness to participate and, and join this team. And I, I think, as you can see, you couldn't see them graphically, but our skills are very impressive. And each person is going to bring something unique and important to our efforts. Um, so now, I'd like to introduce you once again to Erin Griffin, and we're just so fortunate to, it's just great timing for us because our area did not have a uh, CSC regional coordinator until just about two weeks ago, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. And this is someone we can bring all of our questions who can help to guide us and so much more. So Erin, thank you. It would work better if I just talked and then I can email the slides to everyone after. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. As long as that's the place of the recording and everything. Like yes. Everything. Okay. Sure. Um, I had like a presentation about the CSC program and everything, but you can look at that after. Um, so it's great to meet you all. My name is Erin Griffin. Um, I work for the Atlantic North Country Association, which is an organization based in Saranac Lake, but we work all across the North Country. Um, and yeah, I, I've been here about three weeks, <laughs> so I'm pretty new, but essentially, I'm sorry to interrupt. He just changed it. There's a problem with the public one. He just changed the card to that. If people want to sign in, he did a temporary pass. Okay. So we're going to do it and pass it. <laughs> sorry. Um, I feel like I'll just stop oh, my phone. Talk because it won't. You guys can't see the slides anyway, so right. I'll, I'll keep going. Um, 
uh, where was I? So my goal is to um, be the point person for the Climate Smart Community Program for the North Country region. So there's other positions like me across the state for the different regions, and really my goal is to help you all with whatever you need to move forward. Um, whether that's getting the task force up and running, um, applying for or using Climate Smart Community grants, yeah. doing some of the different actions, um, really whatever you sort of identify as needs. Um, and and just sort of be a point person between that um, sort of what's coming through the state program to how it affects all the work that you all do here. And then eventually applying for certification too. Um, I will see in the PowerPoint, there's a map of all of the climate smart communities across the state. Um, some terminology that you'll see is a registered climate smart community just means that a municipality has passed a resolution to join. So it's a pretty low bar to be a registered climate smart community. So right now, password is registered. Um, and then once you do all the different actions, the program is made up of many different actions or all of different points. And once you do enough actions to earn a certain amount of points, you can apply for certification at different levels. Um, the first level is broad certification, you know, 120 points. Um, and right now in the North Country region, the only communities that are certified as bronze are the town and village of Potsdam and the village of Saranac Lake. So you all are definitely like at the leading edge of communities in our region that is making progress on this program, which is really awesome. Um, and then after that, the next level is silver, which is 300 points. So really the difference between that is bronze. Um, I'm also the coordinator of the Saranac Lake Climate Smart Community Task Force. So I've been involved with this program for um, about four years and have been a part of getting a community to bronze. Um, and what we really found when we were organizing our task force and like doing what you all are doing now and trying to figure out what to do is um, we spent a lot of our time just documenting what the village has already done. Um, and we found that with that and a few additional actions and doing greenhouse gas inventory, we were able to get to bronze. Um, and then when you're looking at silver, that is where you really have to demonstrate that you are reducing emiss emissions in order to get enough points to get to silver. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised just with all the different things that have happened in Plattsburgh in the past few years that um, I feel like you're pretty close, you could be pretty close to Bronx already. But it'll be sort of like some investigative um, discovery, figuring out what's already happened, figuring out if it qualifies for points to get there. Um, yeah, I'm like going through the PowerPoint in my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's really the main the main parts of it, um, the cool thing about the Planet Smart Community Program is there's so many actions and there's a few that are mandatory, but not really that many. So it's really flexible and you all can kind of look at the actions and decide what you feel like is a good fit for Plattsburgh and a good fit for all the skills that we have. Um, so it's really flexible depending on what you're interested in doing and where you want to take it. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to be here as a, as a resource and help you all move forward. and. Um, it's exciting to see, just exciting to see it all getting off the ground. Yeah, and you'll see my great powerful later. <laughs> <laughs> all the bells and whistles, right? Well, now the highlights of the resolution that organized us was also um, something that I had prepared in uh, a little slideshow. But You've all got a copy of it. I'm just going to review it very briefly. You know, we're it as far as bringing leadership that promotes climate mitigation and adaptation for the city of Plattsburgh. This, the community is relying upon us. The city government is relying upon us. And that's no small task. And we're to assess the feasibility and or status of actions in the certification program and then act as, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna underline this, an advisory board that collaborates with the mayor's office to accomplish plans, programs, and activities. And you know, hopefully even acquire grants. 
And so we'll be making recommendations to uh, the mayor's office and it might sometimes require, as it has in the past actually, common council approval. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more later. And that's about it. Any questions? Some of you may have your copies right there and want to bring up something else that you see. Okay. Well, now this part is something that's pretty, you know, kind of um, essential to any organization. We're going to figure out how we're going to organize ourselves and run this task force. So let me get my pen out. So as you can see on the agenda, um, we must take minutes. That's part of our responsibility as a task force. And, and as a matter of fact, in order to get credit for being a task force, I need to publish two sets of minutes for the um, uh, certification program. So we will also probably, and this was a, a suggestion based on a meeting that Elizabeth and Kurt and I had, we might want to have somebody that kind of takes responsibility or at least spearheads, it could be me actually, uh, media outreach. Um, we've got two liaisons to the council with our counselors here, Gibbs and Talon, and we need a timekeeper and we'll just drop down to decision-making and, you know, uh, how are we gonna make decisions? Uh, are we gonna use a process to arrive at con uh, consensus? Or are we simply going to take a major, you know, a vote and, and determine our action based on a majority? So those are some things. Um, do we need leadership? I mean, uh, do we want, officers that wasn't put down but maybe not um so i'm gonna i'm gonna tackle the first one there's a few ways we could publish our minutes we could rotate responsibilities for taking minutes or we could have a we could appoint a recorder from among our group so any ideas about how you'd like to tackle that role well i think it's always efficient to have a single note taker. <laughs> I know I've just served on a number of committees and I know you have too. Mm -hmm. It really is more efficient to have a single person who's handling the minutes. Um, and that way it's consistent. That, that's just my, my opinion on that. Um, I, so I see a lot of nodding heads. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that case, then we need to ask for a volunteer. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness, Diana. Thank you so much. Right. Um, Who will share responsibility with me for media outreach? I can do that with you. Okay, Elizabeth. Thank you. And uh, you, I'm sorry. So are you thinking like, um, like for press, press releases? releases? Yeah. I can, yeah. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then maybe you could just talk to the group about you two about how you um, perceive at this point your role as liaisons to the departments? Um, well, I think that our, Jennifer and I as, as city councilors, like in our role here is to be involved in, in what's happening. But um, you know, when you backtrack and talk about how we're an advisory board and we're gonna be making recommendations to the mayor's office and those things might require resol resolutions to be acted on by the council, that's our role. That's what we, you know, because you've served on council. So mm -hmm. our role is to write resolutions um, and to bring them forward to council for approval. Um, it's also our, our role on council to report out, you know, any kind of special reports. Um, and so we can keep the entire council and then it becomes enshrined in minutes and becomes part of public record. Um, and it just creates a lot more transparency and openness and people, you know, those part of minutes in the meeting and all of that. Exactly. Um, and I think that's, that's gonna be really important so that the community knows what we're working on um, and we can keep the council involved and just keep building momentum because as we start to decide what kinds of actions we're going to, to take, you know, action on, what we're going to move on, um, we're going to want community buy-in for the things that they might not be uh, well informed on or might not even be comfortable with. 
like you know how I feel about composting. <laughs> I want to reduce what we put into our landfill, for example, and that's a big move. And we'll want to make sure that the, the community knows what we're doing and the reasons behind it, and then you know things like that. That's our that's how I see our role. She said it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, you know, there may be some times uh, that, that communication in cooperation with the mayor's office that we need to get department people on board or at least inform them. So that, that may be a role of a liaison as well. Can I make one suggestion? Sure. Um, just for the media, this is kind of going back to media and outreach, but on the um, Saranac Lake Task Force, we had... We had two high school students too, and that was a way that they really liked to be involved. Um, they actually started the Instagram page and then created all the content for the page based on what the task force was doing. And that was a position that they, the students like advertised within the green team at the high school and recruited people to be like you are, like a liaison. And that was a really great project for, um, for them to work on. And it, they felt like it helped their, High schoolers learn about what's going on at the city because I like a lot of folks don't. So I just wanted to bring that up as a possible idea, like if that's something you're interested in or if other high school students. Yeah, I can certainly uh, I can certainly work uh, with other high school students uh, and inform them in my group about what's going on here. I will add that I'm technologically illiterate and have no social media accounts of any kind, and I don't think that would be my. But, uh, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> uh, Michelle? Yes. Yeah. Um, the idea of having um, using uh, social media to communicate with the public, I think, is is just, I think it's better than the newspaper, honestly. And uh, so to have an Instagram account, I don't know if a Twitter account or a Facebook account would. But, and just, you know, someone who would just be responsible for updating that mm -hmm. after meetings or, you know, perhaps as projects are moving ahead to be able to. Yeah, Diana wants something. Well, no, I'm just, I totally agree. And it's hard because many of us are not um, a facility with Instagram, especially. Um, and I'm wondering, Alex, although you may not, would there be another student that's willing to help with my Instagram? Well, yeah. I could, I could on some, I've yeah. got, an, I've got an Instagram account. I, yes. It's, it's pretty, you know, I would be more than happy to mm -hmm. manage mm -hmm. on behalf of this, um, wonderful group, manage an Instagram account. Um, great. Um, it's, it's so easy to create and I can whatever you want. I mean, it's wonderful. Okay. So yes, I would. I would take on put that. And, on. and, and I way, think Michelle, if there's anything, sorry, but if there's anything that you would want to communicate that way, oh, I, you know, anyone on the board could just communicate. To sure. Them and I just absolutely. There's also a City of Plattsburgh Facebook page. You know, we could probably forward some of those to the the mayor. Who manages that? Um, Courtney. I, Courtney Meisenheimer, and I don't know what her title is. Oh, okay. Is that Sally's daughter? Yes. yes. No, it's her daughter-in-law. Yeah. Coordinator? Events coordinator slash publicist yeah, or something absolutely. for the... Yeah. Um, and since we're bringing it up, uh, we used to have a web page on the city website. And that is actually an action that we need to uh, set up, you know, do, do what's necessary. Um, it's currently not a functioning, um, but we'll, we'll work on that. And I'll get to that later when we're down to the graph of the planned and completed actions. Yes. And just as a protocol, you know, working with some other organizations, any posting should always be first uh, through the coordinator. Okay. Yeah, I would have to go through Michelle. Okay. Yes. Yep. That, and that's that's very important. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you. Would we want would we want um, posts to be approved by the group, or do you think just through you, Michelle? Like, so well, like an action item on a, on our you know things to do monthly, uh, or do you want to just put it through you? Well, I can see. 
advantages of, of having it go through me, but I, I'm interested in your ideas. Well, I think because Elizabeth agreed to assist you with publicity, mm -hmm. that between you and if you have some need for feedback, that you reach out in between. Okay, okay we're a team, Elizabeth. <laughs> Once again. Okay, so another role that that Kurt thought might be valuable, and I hope Kurt is with us somewhere. <laughs> Does anybody have him on your screen or were you able to log into the zoom on your screens? Oh, okay, uh, is a timekeeper, you know, and already, uh, let me see, we're at four o'clock and let me see, five, hmm, 20, 30, well, we're not bad. 40. So we're not bad. We're pretty much on time. Anybody want to volunteer to do that? Thank you, Susan. So we're at four o'clock and we're a little ahead of the game. Now regarding decision making. Um, anybody want to contribute their thoughts? You're all a part of different organizations, some that have different kind of protocols. So maybe, um, you know, I just have some kind of gut reaction to the question. We're a small group. And it seems to me that we ought to be able to arrive at consensus. Uh, and the thing is, Sorry, with consensus, <laughs> it's not necessarily that everyone agrees. If you disagree, but you can live with it and can, you know, assent uh, to the will of the majority, uh, then we can declare consensus about something. Does that sound like a, an appealing way to or make That's decisions? I yes. Okay. Any other thoughts? All right. Wonderful. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I guess I need the chart that I, I'm glad I had this printed up. <laughs> what I ended up doing is putting it on a slideshow that didn't kind of make your eyes boggle to uh, there's that. We're well on our way, and as you can see on the chart, in some cases we have everything we need, and in some cases we are um, waiting. <clears throat> so, how long do we have? So we have 15 minutes for this, Susan. I think we're well ahead, so we don't have to worry. So I have everything I need to submit and get the 30 points total for um, having a task force and a coordinator. Um, obviously, we need to produce the inventory in order to get the 16 points for that. Um, there's a note for the environmentally preferred purchasing policy because there are efficiency standards. And we only have two of the four points, but we're eligible for two points. So that's good. Well, you know, at some point, once we get our work done with the um, management of organic uh, and, and, and Aaron, this is in purchasing food for our government or? And everything. Everything. Yeah, all kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. And then forest stewardship, I didn't, I didn't delve into that too That's much. Like okay. Yes. All right. So we may have more because I think there is, uh, as part of our policy, we have a, a section about buying recycled paper. So, so that could be two to three points. Then I think the organics is the only one that clearly we haven't covered in that policy. Uh, fleet efficiency policy and the fleet inventory. Um, we have need some clarification and you know if you can just do this on the fly, Aaron. Um, I noticed that our policy quoted the goals that the EPA had published. And according to what I read, you need a percentage that you're going to achieve in two years uh, and then five years. And I don't think that is part of our 
complete inventory policy. So that needs some clarification, but I'm pretty sure that will be easy to determine. Uh, as you read, we have everything lined up except for photos for the recycling and government buildings. <clears throat> and uh, I'll just need to go around and see what offices are, are on board and take photos of a few of a sample. Uh, now, recycling and public events. Uh, we had one event in December of 2019 where we had recycling available. It was the middle of winter. It was a lot of recycling that was, uh, you know, generated. So, uh, but I think this is something that would be easy for us to try to work on, if not for the mayor's cup. Uh, if we can't get it together and get enough receptacles to have available to the public for every trash can, there has to be a recycled a recycling container or perhaps a mayor's cup, right? For public places, we have to think about our parks. We have to think about the beach. We have to think about any place that's city property. So that's still in process, even though we have the uh, policy and the resolution lined up to go ahead and implement. Um, got some good news on the next page. Uh, the city did file for CEC accreditation and earned 12 points because it uh, has replaced its Cobra and decorative lights with um, um, LED lights. If you want, I can just, it can be really confusing the difference between climate smart and clean energy community. So I mm -hmm. feel like it might be worth if I just explain that really. Sure, do it. People understand. Um, it's like, you know, classic New York State, like acronym central. Um, but uh, the clean energy community program is a state program through NYSERDA which is a different state agency. The Climate Smart Community Program is interagency, but it's run through the DEC. So it's sort of like the Climate Smart is DEC, Clean Energy is NYSERDA. And really the difference is the Clean Energy Community, there's much fewer actions and they're called high impact actions because they're all ones that have really big reductions in greenhouse gases. Um, there's also more funding attached with that program. So when you complete, um, you have to complete fewer of these larger actions that qualifies you to earn. In, in the most, for the most part, you just have to complete a couple actions to get grant money. Um, so, and I know, I think um, Nancy has put this in an email, but I think Classroom only needs to complete one more high That's impact right. action to get grant money through that. So the programs really work together, mm -hmm. um, but there is a difference in them. So if you see CEC or CSC, those are the two different right. programs. I think I may have sent you the CSC CEC crosswalk document, mm -hmm. which kind of summarizes how they overlap. Yeah. What is okay. the action that has to be completed? Um, I don't that. know yet. Yeah. <laughs> we can, it's, I think, up to. Yes. Right. And we'll yeah. want, we'll want to choose something that gets credit for both. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all do. They all, you get credit for both. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And then go. There were a lot of questions regarding these, and maybe because one of our liaisons has is uh, really is she's the chairperson of the board of the MLD. She might be able to help us figure out uh, whether we really can get re renewable energy certification. And if you'll see the status, uh, since we purchased hydroelectric, it might account for 100% of government operations energy. Perhaps not. Maybe there's some facilities. Perhaps it's. Um... I believe these are credits, renewable energy credits, mm -hmm. not certification. Well, yeah. it's it's listed as. It, really? It is. And that's why I put previously referred to as credits on the action checklist. I thought it was odd. Is that the Wi Fi? on that sticky note down there? Yeah. Okay, do you mind if I use it? Because I can sort of just like check some of the stuff. Very good, okay. thank you. Um, let's just put a question mark in the interest of time on that. Um, 
Uh, same for power purchasing agreements. Need some clarification there. We do have uh, points that are ready to be collected. And it's a uh, priority clean energy community action. Um, for the two charging stations that were newly installed at the beach, I was hoping that we would get credit for the ones that are right outside, but those were installed in 20, January of 2021. So apparently they weren't eligible for the round in which the application was made. So we missed out on that. But we do have, um, how many? Six points. Farmer's market, another question there. Um, just from my experience with the council, I know that we always allowed the farmer's market to take place over um, all, on the Durkee Street parking lot. All we have to do in Saranac Lake for that is to show the park use permit that the village gave the farmer's market, essentially. Wonderful. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> woo -woo, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you said the permit? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if it's the same. It's like it's a park use permit. And then okay. The well, they have their own building mm -hmm. and they're leasing. Are they leasing from um, on Green Street? We'll just have to I'm clarify not really that. Sure. I mean, they have their own board. Yeah. They, they are occupying um, an old MLD building on, our, on the city property. Yeah. Um, and so our partnership is with is with their board. We provide we provided them with the space. Yeah. But they run independently. Like we're not telling them all. What you have to do is show how the municipality supports it. Mm -hmm. And if you can show any way that like how the city platform supports the farmers market, if you can describe it and there's any sort of documentation you can attach to it, <coughs> then you're good. Well, at the very least, we have free parking, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have charging stations down there. Oh, well, we do? Yeah, that's what we put in last year, I think. Interesting. We'll charging stations right there in the in the parking lot. With the Nancy Bernstein did not mention those, so I guess we have more credits, unless those hadn't been applied uh, to in the previous round, that, where you got credit. About that, okay. I'm not sure. Those were put in last year. I know that. Okay. Well, we will see. Uh, once again, here's here's the website. Uh, long story short, it was just that it's not functioning, and we will get it up and running. Um, so those were the actions that were listed as completed in our former coordinator's uh, summary of our actions, completed actions. And then uh, he labeled the rest ongoing actions. Uh, so if you see over to the left, and I will, I will attach this document and send it to you so, so you can click on all those uh, links are clickable and you can do any further research you want on the website. But um, I just need to check with the mayor and, and Director Miller about where they are with regard to that. Uh, comprehensive plan with sustainability elements. Uh, we've got, that can be an attachment to our current comprehensive plan, but I'm not sure, does anybody know what the status of our comprehensive plan is? I know there's always been talk about revising it and updating it. Do you know anything? I do. Uh, counselors? Uh, it has something on it. It does. Okay, well, could you uh, put your phone on speaker? Oh, no, I just like to hear him in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. okay. Now we just have to figure out, uh, Aaron, could you come and tell me how to get rid of this screen? Because I'm i not sharing it with Bert anymore. Thank you. Good thing for these young people. <laughs> Here he is. Okay. Yeah. Now, how, how it may be that counselors Gibbs and Talon have a better idea than I do. Oh. Can you say one more thing? I want to see if it if I turn up the volume. Yes. So I sit on the comprehensive plan planning committee, but it may be that counselors Gibbs or Talon have a better idea of where it is than I do. I can give an update, but I'm not sure they have, might have more current information. I do not have an update on that. I think it's something that's still being worked on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still being worked on. It's still being discussed. Um, so the. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So it, um, you know, that plan has been in development for about maybe the past 18 months or so, but it was just released to the public and they did just have an unveil unveiling of that plan. Most of it focuses on a zoning code update um, and some land use issues. It doesn't have, it, sustainability is included, but not in a major way. Okay. So for that action, it, um, if you look at the action, it gives like four different required criteria you have to show as being in the comprehensive plan. And then once you have those four, there's all these other <coughs> categories. And if you can show that you have a piece of that, you get like a tiered level of points, depending on how many of those um, components you have in the plan. So it's really just a matter of like, um, like looking at those categories and then searching through the document to see what's in there. It doesn't have right. to be like an addition or anything. It's kind of like what already is integrated. Okay. And the, so, uh, so I think that, go ahead. I, I, so I think that as I'm looking at the description here, I think it definitely provides a vision for how the community wants to grow over 10 to 20 years and recommend steps to achieve it. As, and then it says, as part of the vision, the comprehensive planning process offers an opportunity for communities to consider how to balance the three E's of sustainability. And I don't know that it does that in a strong way. It, I, it doesn't reference the three E's specifically. There's not a lot in it about equity. Um, and the economic piece is mostly about business and economic development. Um, is, is that so it would be plan, weaker there. Is it open for like comment during right now? Yeah, I believe so. I, it definitely has not been finalized. It's still a draft version. That could be a pretty powerful thing that task force could do is to make suggestions to revise a plan based on the CSC program, like the things that would need to be included. Wonderful. Good idea. Um, and, and through what, um, how do you access that plan on, on the city website? That's a good question, Rochelle. I can look right now and see if it is there. Okay. Oh, it's so nice to hear your voice, Kurt. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, we're waiting for that. Can I just ask, does anyone on his or her phone have, um, I, I literally just saw the account, and, but I need a photograph. Does anyone have a photograph of something from Plattsburgh, whether it's a photograph on their phone, that you can just send. Yeah. Let's let's My husband, maybe after. Yeah. No. And then, okay. I, I, and I'll just. Wilder takes pictures all over the city. I just need to find them. Shall we wait for Kurt while he investigates that, or shall I go, go on? Go ahead and move. Go ahead and move on. Okay. I'm looking. <clears throat> go ahead and move on. All right, so complete streets policy. You might have more information. I know, Elizabeth, you have mentioned that some work has been done, but um, we're unclear. So the um, complete streets policy was passed last year. It's okay. done. All and right. The policy was, was written last year. Um, I, I know I have a copy of it because I printed it. <laughs> but I have it on my, I don't think I have it in my... Yeah. yeah, I'll just um, I'll just need Beth to give me a copy of the certified resolution and the policy. Uh, and then it says includes additional steps necessary for full imp uh, implementation measures to its assess performance. Formally initiates the process of creating a complete streets implementation plan in a time frame. Oh, well, that's already been completed, so. <laughs> I found the L, I found, okay, this is why I didn't really understand it. The mayor's calling it the LRAP. That's what he always says. LRAP, yeah, that's so. It's a plan and zoning update. So I'm looking on the website right now, on my phone, so it's going slow. Okay. So I did find it. Another action you might want to look into because you're doing the zoning update too, is there is an action that is smart growth policies. And that yeah. is one where you look at your zoning and your land use code and you kind of take a look at how much 
um, how many smart growth principles show up in the code. And that's another way that you can get points. And if that is also under review right now, it could be a good time to kind of look at that action and see if there are things that are missing that potentially could be added that would um, meet the requirements for CSC. Okay. There's a link there for comments. Okay. So this is a local waterfront uh, re revitalization program. Yeah. yeah. Um, and complete streets is embedded in that. Right? Is that what you're saying, Elizabeth? No, the, I'm saying that the complete streets policy was um, passed oh. last year on the council. Okay. And I have, I know, I printed it or I made note of it. I just can't put my okay, on it. so this is the comprehensive plan. You want to yeah. just email that to uh, in reply to one of our group communications, or maybe it's, the most see. recent one. Goes in February. February of twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah. That's I excellent, and that's four points. Mm -hmm. Well, now based on the ones that I had things in order for, we had fifty six points. So if we can add that one, that's uh, and 60. Another one you have, the, the action, this is under, what else is for the bottom, the National for Regional Climate Program. That's because, easy. Yes, you've got that. You've done the Clean Energy Community Action. Right. So that, you've got that. Okay. Too. So that brings us up to what? How many for that one? I, I have to double check up here. I don't know where <laughs> I laid down my action <laughs> check. <laughs> We're ahead of time, right? Well, no. It depends what you think. Minutes or okay, so we we've exceeded fifteen minutes. From four o'clock, right? Four or three minutes, so. Right. So we're gonna we if we're gonna get to short and long term goals, then you know we probably should you know bring this to a close. What do you We're think, Drew? About opportunities at the same time. We are. So we, you know. Minutes, so we should be fine. Okay, thanks, Susan. So yeah, as we review our list and see what we can accomplish, that's a, those are short-term goals, right. right there. Um, where was I? I mean, when we start the dinner, like essentially our short-term goal is to figure out what had already been done. And if it could qualify for points, which does not sound like it would be that hard, but it literally took us months. Like yeah. Some of it is real nitpicking. You have to right. produce some like nitpicky document. And then our long term goal was just to get certified. Right. <laughs> so right. we didn't really overthink that part of it too much. Right. I think it helped keep the group pretty focused. Yeah. Really I, I listed it. as a uh, medium goal being certified by January. No. There are three certification windows. Hi there, Susan. Uh, one at, in January, one yeah. in July, and one. Um, I believe there's one in April. Oh, in April. Okay. Uh, I can double check. There's four, and there's sort of there's like three in the beginning of the year, and then one. Later. Oh, there's four. Great. Yeah, the chai. Hi, Susan. This is Susan Levat. Yeah, I was always with the gardening group. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, yeah, it's um, April, July, January, and January. So they're okay. January. All right. Yeah. Let's just pause here and let Susan introduce herself. We're. Okay. I'm Dr. Susan Levat. I teach at Bedford City uh, City School District. Uh, I've been a high school and. I am late because we do gardening on Thursday, and we have a group of students who like to garden, and we also have students doing beekeeping, which Max is one of the wonderful. Most the high school, so. Wonderful. I'm glad you could join in. Yeah, and there'll be there'll be a video of the meeting, so you can catch up that way. All right. Okay. Um, so we're just going over this list of actions that we've either completed or have planned. And I believe we're on the last page, which is green parking lot policies. Uh, I question whether the policy has been adopted. And then I give some lists of the requirements in order to achieve the points. 
uh, you know, we installed we installed several new parking lots over the last uh, four or five years, and it would have been nice maybe to incorporate some of the policies to govern their establishment at that time, but that did not happen, unfortunately. Uh, planning for biking and walking. Uh, I say we need to check with the mayor and CD. Does anybody here know anything about that? About planning for biking and walking action. P yeah, the action PE 610 and whether there's been any formal... Uh, I don't think that, Jennifer, you could tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've adopted a formal policy but I know that with a lot of um, the newer development, the newer construction, like that's part of the, right. the larger footprint with the Murder Street project. Right. Um, but to say that it's a citywide policy, I, I, that, I don't think that's true. I believe there's some um, sheriffs made already for, for bikes and cars to share. And we're definitely um, looking for that for um, Margaret Street's reconstruction. We have the Saranac River Trail biking lanes, right? What were you going to say, Matt? Sorry, I was just clicking my pen. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that when uh, the city planning office, community development office, was um, receiving input from the public for a comprehensive plan, okay. I participated in several of those um, open forums and uh, bike paths and walking sidewalks were right. in All right. a very so, big priority. So, so hope and that's it, something that would probably be going into a comprehensive plan. Exactly, exactly. Good. At such point as it, I don't know what we can do independently, however. No, no, I mean, that's not a role to do anything independently, but to find out what's being done or encourage or recommend to for it to be done. And it sounds like we have some pieces together. We just need a larger, more comprehensive plan that ties everything together. Um, there also is an action, um, infrastructure for biking and walking, and there's different components of that action that I you probably already have. Um, okay. It is expand and improve bike and walking paths, bike lanes of sidewalks, improve bike parking, improve bike and pedestrian signage, so those sharrows would totally qualify for that, or develop a bike share program. And those are all under that one action. You get points depending on which one's done. So Wonderful. that might be a good place to start it too. Isn't it great that she's here, you guys? <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Put up the, uh, I mean, they're bike racks now. Yeah. Really cool. Very bike decorative. Racks all mm -hmm. over the city. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know where they came from. But... Well, that's, that's an action right there. Yeah. Your bike park. It was, um, I think, a grant. Yeah, Who was there? Yeah, we did oh. last year. Okay. Uh, so, so, going on, I think we'll finish up and maybe. Uh, pin down uh, some of our short range, medium range, and long term goals next. So, zoning to protect natural areas, you know, and uh, natural climate. What I can't understand my natural own. Natural or regional climate. Okay, that was the one you were suggesting yeah. was nice. Nice. Um, nice. Easy. Yeah. Okay. And. I forgot to list what 10-3 was. Oh, I think that's uh, region um, organizations, local governments demonstrate with neighboring communities, the relevant agencies in a manner that's consistent with the guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. So either coordinating with an organization or a local government. one that's partnerships is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. I was just gonna look up 10.3. Um, Sorry about that. That's okay. I think this one doesn't have the points on it. It just says they're all action 10. So <laughs> there's three action 10. There's uh, annual progress report updates to strategies and plans or greenhouse gas tracking system. So uh, maybe that's a typo. So let's let's just go on and sure. I'll I'll I've got it somewhere. I'll get to that. Okay. So we have the potential for getting a lot done 
And then the question becomes uh, opportunities uh, and what what we can what we can designate clearly. Kurt, are you with us? Kurt. <laughs> I know you're trying to get a bite to eat. I can see that. But I'm here. Uh, okay, good, good. Um, do you would you have any? Uh, I think we might have spoken about you taking part and kind of helping shape this discussion. If, if not, I can certainly do it, but if sure. you don't mind, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are lots of things. I, I, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Oh. So there are lots of things happening in the city and we all come from different parts of the city. And I think in this part of the agenda, we're hoping to identify some some priorities from those different perspectives that we each have uh, that would go into our long-term, short, medium, and long-term planning. So uh, one thing that I can think of off the top of my head to maybe get discussion going is that SUNY Plattsburgh has a new strategic plan. And as part of that new strategic plan is um, stronger engagement with the city of Plattsburgh and other North country communities, but especially around sustainability issues. Um, one of those being engagement in students in local businesses and government offices as interns, um, working on sustainability work. Uh, so that would be maybe one area where the city and the college could kind of align their planning. That's awesome. So yes. I think, you know, that that means if there are students that could serve as interns to this group, but elsewhere within City Hall and also within other offices and businesses around the community. How do you see that um, <clears throat> taking place within, you know, within the scope of short, medium and long range goals? Um, I think initially there are some short term windows of opportunity. You know, I would love to have some students interning for this community, this committee and doing some of the legwork that that they can learn from, but also that we on this committee may not have the time to do. Um, so, you know, even things like assisting in note taking um, assisting in organizing, sending emails to the group, those kinds of things um, would be great if there's communication with city staff that needs to happen. Maybe they could be involved in some of that, but there's, you know, there's a resource there that I don't think we tap frequently enough um, that can supply a lot of energy and legwork. You know, Couple and days. Kurt, my apologies. I, I jumped. You're on opportunities and priorities. So yeah, is that I, not I where jumped we were? down and I was framing it in terms of that. So I, I do apologize. So so that's exciting. And I think that the more resources we have, um, <clears throat> as long as we remain organized and have a way of uh, coordinating all of that, that's a, that is a great opportunity. And I love the idea of... You know, the, the way it will build community between the college campus and maybe the high school campus. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I have to step out really quickly. I just wanted to really quickly introduce myself and hope that I'll be um, back. I'm Jennifer Perry. I'm a counselor for good. So um, I, I can talk for 45 minutes, but I'm so excited about all of this and I will be in touch in the future. Uh, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you so much, uh, thank Jennifer. You. So if you want to bring that up later, uh, just to follow up on her point. Okay. All right. Other priorities and opportunities, Mr. Dr. Gerbich. Sorry. Well, so I think another one where we tend in Plattsburgh to often fall short, right, is in the equity space related to sustainability. So, you know, we think about the three E's of sustainability, environment, economy, and equity. Um, 
our natural environment here is gorgeous and we have 100% renewable energy and there's not, I, I think that that's not the space where we're behind. The same for economy, I and mean, there's always work to do on local economic development, but between the Chamber and the Economic Development Corporation and the city, there's work being done in that space, but we don't do a lot in the equity space in this community. Um, and so that is a place where I would put some, some focus. That's why I read some up. Um, what would um, focusing on equity look like? Because I honestly am not, I mean, I-, I Yeah, so I think, I, I, I think of maybe three areas to kind of address initially. One, I know there's lots of interest. It sounds like there's lots of interest in this group, but I also know there are things going on at the high school and at the college around food and food okay. systems. And Plattsburgh is a designated food, parts of Plattsburgh are a designated food desert by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, so, and especially now with inflation being what it is, healthy produce is becoming more expensive. So I think there's space in the food justice area to do work through the food shelves, through restaurants, through the farmer's market, through our community garden organization. Um, I know there's there's been some conversation about composting and Jennifer who just left, she now is coordinating the composting program at SUNY Plattsburgh. So instead of doing composting on site at the college, the way that we used to, that was never very effective. Um, Jennifer now has a team of students and they pick up, pick up post-consumer food waste at several of the dining halls on campus. And then it's being composted at Jennifer's farm and then redistributed when it is usable compost. Um, so I think there's, you know, something interesting that could be done there with local restaurants. Yeah. Uh, and the community gardens and our other institutions, the hospital, the school district, those are, you know, those are our, our biggest employers and our biggest institutions are the hospital, school district, and SUNY. Um, so those would be places where I start in the area of food. Um, I also think in the area of equity uh, that uh, to think about um, economic inequity and um, if there are ways, you know, raising, raising middle, middle class opportunities, moving more people into the middle class. You know, our poverty rate is 30%, which is above the national average. Um, so if there are ways that we can address that, all of this, you know, fits in that equity and, and to some degree, the economic component of sustainability. And then uh, I also think it'd be interesting to look at population and who's moving into Plattsburgh and who's moving out of Plattsburgh and ways to increase population in a way that addresses equity. So one thing that really comes to mind is there are lots of small communities around the country that are finding refugees and immigrants as a valuable place, a valuable way to increase population. And that over time, resettling immigrants and refugees in your community turns into a way to not only increase population, but to also increase diversity. And these are people who start restaurants and start stores and bring diversity to our local school district and come with new perspectives. And so if there's a way to engage in resettlement programming. Good stuff. Wow. Good stuff. Thank you. That's yeah. And then lastly, I guess I would add a fourth, Loretta, would, would be low-income housing. Yeah. Um, I guess a couple other thoughts I had on equity that um, might be like might tie more directly to the CSC actions too would be like this could be a really great student project actually it's like where are there bike lanes in the city how do those line up to where like different economic classes of neighborhoods are um, are there parts of the city that have worse access to bike lanes or sidewalks um, and how does that sort of align on on income and does it. It does, maybe it doesn't. Or things like um, 
access to natural spaces, um, access to street trees, things like particularly as we have more heat, like those are things that really increase uh, neighborhoods resilience to heat. Um, so looking at areas of the city that do have access to green spaces and street trees and then areas of the city that don't, um, like information like that could be really important for things like the comprehensive plan or a climate action plan or, or things like that. To what extent uh, would that include public transportation and yes, that's um, really good equitable one. access to that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. That's a great one. Some of that work, Erin, has been done at the college, but the sad thing is the college is not very good at connecting with the city to distribute that information. Mm -hmm. um, and some of that work, you know, while it gets done in small ways in classes, it's not always, it, it's not always, doesn't always meet the professional standards that we would want it to. But I think if we, and, and yeah, it's difficult to do to do that kind of high level work in a class because you have a full range of students. Yeah. But if we were, if you know, and the, the mayor and I and others at the college have talked a lot about starting a more formalized internship program with an application process where we would have more ability to narrow the students that were going into those positions and better define the projects. I think we can quickly start from the work that has been done and bump it up to the level that the city would want it to be at in order to use it for more valuable purposes like comprehensive planning and for CSC. Yeah, I have a question here. So as Susan looked at the car, but um, do you ever tap the data that the school district collects because they have a, a wealth of data. For instance, we know that um, around 50% of our population is classified as homeless. 50%? Does that, yes. Because they don't, they may be living in, um, they may be living with a grandparent, you know, their family, their parents um, can't afford housing, so they're living with a grandparent that's classified as homeless. We have a portion of students, and this blew my mind when I found this out, but um, we always get our, we always get our numbers um, somewhere around midsummer, you know, what our population will be. We're always armed. But right before school starts, people start registering. And we find out that um, quite a few families actually live like they're camping all summer, so they don't have to pay rent. They only have to pay a, a, a small fee to rent a piece of, you know, in the campground. And then they have to move every couple of weeks or whatever, but they can stay there. And they don't have a home. Or they go into some of these um, efficiency apartments. But yeah, we have like 15%, and that's one of the reasons. Did you say 50 or 15? 50. 50. I know it's, it's, it's my bargain to think that. But they actually qualify under federal standards as homeless because they don't have secure homes mm -hmm. here. That's what we see in the district, and we're very transient at the elementary level. We have like 40% population turnaround at the elementary level, people moving in and out of the district because the younger parents are more fragile economically. The district has all those, all that data because we have to write for grants and we have to write for, you know, special ed needs mm -hmm. and such. So um, that's just reaching out to our district administrators mm -hmm. and saying we can access that also, which might help with grant writing and that. But I can tell you firsthand, I run in the morning around Plattsburgh and I like to bike from Plattsburgh. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, too, even the students that I encounter. They don't have access to a lot of things. It isn't even on the radar um, to participate in some things like sailing on the lake or boating or you know, anything like that. That's just out of their venue completely. Right. And that's a economic thing. Right. So, and that is kind of a concern of mine as we talk about our plans going forward, and I don't wish to go on a dive track, but we'll state this. I'm very aware that there are people who can't partake, but I have money to do pretty much whatever I want in Glasgow. Okay. Um, and I can talk about being energy efficient and everything and make changes to my house and that and my car. There's a lot of people can. Right. And it's not that they don't want to, but they can't even enter the conversation. They don't have the funds, and that's funds. Mm -hmm. And I can go two blocks over from my house. No. 
and I can be in very rundown mm -hmm. and a very rundown street with very poor housing. And that's only two blocks away. Right. And that's Glassburg. Offering to Hmm? Oh, I just had a thought. Um, I wonder if one of the things that we're tying into what you were just saying, I wonder if one of the things that we could do, it's not on the list, but some sort of community garden, mm -hmm. because that would help, you know, that's a low threshold for people to get involved. Anyone can get involved and they can also benefit. <clears throat> and they don't have to pay for your plot. Right. <laughs> they have some, have some support. And we have some public land uh, yeah. or community garden, have people who would be willing to just mm -hmm. work with individuals who want to plant and grow food. And that's a therapy, it can be a therapy. Yeah. Right. To work in it and and social plan. Yeah, yeah, the community garden, I mean, so far, I mean, my family has had a plot at the community garden over by Bailey Ave in the past. And the community garden, while very valuable and important, seems at the moment to be so small that it exists more as a hobby than as an actual yeah. mm -hmm. potential source of food or as an actual uh, potential resource for people. It's just too small. I mean, you can, it, it's just tiny. And it feels like a, a large expansion of that could be an extremely valuable yeah. asset. So yeah. as far as you know, Aaron, is there anything, and were you going to insert? I was going to say, aren't there community gardens over by John Collins? Yes, right. there are. Are provided? There are. Um, um, but Aaron, as way, far as... Right. Yeah, our community garden center. There were last year. I don't know. Right. Now. Do there, to, but hold on, hold on. Just let me ask Aaron a question because I want to. I want to make sure that this is translatable and relevant to what we can do in the program. I mean, these are wonderful ideas, and they will help to shape, you know, what our priorities are. But is, is there anything that you can think of that has to do with making uh, community gardens available to um, lower income? There is a action policies for local food systems. Okay. Um, so it's not a lot of points, but it's in there. Um, there should be more. It's yeah. more around the zoning than the actual creation of it. Right. And I think it's just because, like, obviously community gardens are great for a lot of reasons, but most of the actions in the program have to do with direct, like, greenhouse gas emission mm -hmm. reduction. I would say the only other thing that's, like, sort of related to that are actions around composting. There's a lot of actions around composting and food scrap um, processing. Uh, but less around actually growing. Mm. So Not maybe we could, as a group, uh, you know, kind of lobby uh, Dazzle Ekblad and, uh, you know, suggest that for the reasons that Kurt just outlined regarding equity, we need to really uh, build up that aspect of the CSC actions. So I, I would add just a couple of things to that. One, in the city of Plattsburgh in our zoning code, community gardens require special use permits. They're not required, they're not allowed by right or without a permit in any zone. Um, so that's an obstacle to, to establishing more community gardens. Um, Adam Smith. Oh. What's that? <laughs> that was a good Adam Smith. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear the comment. Oh, who thought that went up? And then Max said, Adam Smith. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> Maxwell. I should say Maxwell. I'm sorry, Maxwell. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so that's an obstacle. Running, um, oh. I just, I want to provide a time check. We have 10 minutes and I'm not sure what we want to accomplish. I, I think I appreciate um, some of the opportunities you are uh, outlining for us. And I, it, it really enriches our conversations about what we want to do to think of all of the dimensions and all of the ramifications, uh, you know, and, and it's inspiring. It really is. Uh, but I think before we leave, we should try to get a handle on what we can do. Let's just say for the short term. Let's mm -hmm. just say for the short term, I think that's easy. And I'm pretty sure we have consensus already regarding that. So uh, shall we just have a open the discussion regarding that? Yeah, I mean, earlier, I think like half an hour ago, you were talking about the LRAP 
and mm -hmm. our ability to comment uh, mm -hmm. on that. If that's still open, I think that seemed like a pretty popular. Sorry, what was that? Yeah, what was it? Uh, the LRAP. It was right before you got here. We were discussing. LRAP. What's that? I, so I just I just sent the link. I don't have everybody's email, <laughs> but I said just send it to me. Aaron, Diana, and, and Susan. No, I'll send it to everyone. So, we, we've just finished a comprehensive plan, right, Kurt? And so, yeah, just to be clear, the LRAP and the comprehensive plan are different. The LRAP, the draft LRAP is on the city's website. The comprehensive plan draft is not. Um, I was just looking as, as you all were talking, but I do have a copy of it so that we could comment on that. OK, um, so we'll so organize that. It sounds as though we have everything we need in order to organize that so that our members can provide commentary. And there's probably a way to amplify that message through our body to the public. Okay, and anything else on people's minds for a short term goal? Uh, one that we've already accomplished is we now have an Instagram account. Okay. <laughs> um, Thank you, Lori. Yeah, Appreciate and that. just so everyone knows, um, it is um, P-L-A-T-T Platt CSC. Yeah, so or, you just got three points. Yeah. yeah. Hey. It's Platt CSC, or just, you can also, if you go on Instagram, just search for Plattsburgh um, Climate Start Community. Okay. Or Climate Smart. All right. Very good. So I'm going to suggest that, that we set a goal of over the next month, two months, you give me feedback to finish up all the loose ends on some of the ones that are that are right here before us. And I, I think that might take a little bit of delegation uh, of uh, you know, people taking responsibility for certain actions and making sure once I give you this uh, document through email where you can click on everything and just doing the research, asking the questions and so forth. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Uh, that will give us more than 56, 60 points, 63 points, I guess we're tallying now. The bronze level certification is 120 points. So that's well within our grasp. Any other suggestions for short-term goals? Are there any projects that haven't been listed here that, that you'd like to recommend that the group tackle as a short-term goal? I mean, I think one aspect of it is figuring out how to use that grant from 2019. Was it 2019? Oh yeah, that, that, that the GHG grant, the yeah, inventory I'm grant. Just in that. Because I believe that was in for the inventory and a climate action plan. So if that, like that's kind of a discussion, um, because there's money for that, it may make sense to have a consultant produce those instead of having me do it, just because you already have the resources to do that externally. Um, so like, that's something I could help. Would you mind repeating what you're saying there? You're, you're I, I, like, I lost you. I could be a resource to do things like greenhouse gas inventories. However, because you already received a grant to pay somebody to do that. No. I thought you did. No. No. I thought we talked about this. You guys received it in 2019. You got that. We got 30,000. Yes. Right. Oh, so you can pay a consultant is what you're saying. Yes, typically that's what that money okay. is for. That All right. is to pay someone to do. We ha to I was thinking of the um, half that we had to construct by using uh, in-kind oh, services from system. us and the in, you know CD office, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's something if you like, if you want to have that, I, I think it would make sense to pay somebody else to do that because you already have. That's okay. Wonderful. Um, so I can, like, we can figure out who might right. do that. I, I can probably find someone to recommend for you. Wonderful. Because I believe that money was for the greenhouse gas inventory and the climate action plan. Right. So that's huge. It is. That's and huge. how much time do you estimate a, a consultant would need in order to accomplish that? I will 
need to find that out because okay. it's not a process I've worked through before. I, greenhouse gas inventory, I don't think should take more than a couple of months. Okay. Like I would think a climate action plan is typically like a longer process that includes like public input sessions and like involving the community. To, that might be more like six months or more after the greenhouse gas inventory because you want that data from the greenhouse gas inventory to exactly. inform your climate action right. plan. Because so, you've got to provide targets yeah. and, and uh, outcomes that yeah. you want. So that's something that I can ask about who might be like a contractor to do that. Very good. So, Wonderful. Um, yeah. So we we have a company named Barton and Lejunas that mm -hmm. we paid under contract last year and this year to work on grant writing for us and pursuing grants. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and I, I probably don't have an answer for that unless I speak to the mayor about it, I wonder if that would be a resource for us since we already have them in the contract. Yeah, if those are services they provide, yeah, absolutely. For this particular thing, I can't speak to it, but I'm yeah. wondering if, I mean, if you're thinking of having somebody do it and we're already having- I mean, that's what the grant's for, so I feel like, that is what you should use it for. <laughs> right, right. So would you like me to, I can reach out to the mayor about that and email him and ask, and I can put you on the email chain. So if they're grant writers though, they're they're not going to, uh, how they would they fit work. into this? So you're saying you're looking, we need to find somebody who we would pay. <laughs> no, 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 to do the inventory. To, to complete to the do the cash inventory. And the climate action plan. Right. Okay. So maybe that would not be. But maybe. that's relevant to perhaps any I mean, action that we too. identify that we that is eligible for a CSC grant, right? Um, wait, say that again. Well, perhaps if we pursue an action that has as a component uh the ability to apply for a grant, is am I right so far? I, I think I think so. All right, we could employ the people that the city has hired to write the grants for the CSC for grants. CSC grant. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but is this when we get to when we get to that point? Get to that point. Yeah. yeah. So this, com but the conversation, this was originally about how do we do the greenhouse gas inventory and how do we write the climate smart, the climate adaptation plan? Right. So can I offer um, a greenhouse gas inventory is not something that we've done at SUNY Plattsburgh, but we do have a new vice, a, a new director of facilities who does have that experience. And we have students that are interested in learning it. Um, the climate action planning piece, we do have the ability to write at the college. And I think that as much work as we can accomplish locally with local community members doing that work together is valuable for lots and lots of reasons. Um, and so I would offer the maybe the first place to look would be the college and even the high school to do that work together rather than outsourcing the inventory and the planning piece. Well, it, just to, to kind of summarize that conversation, it will be a matter of thinking about the most expedient way to do it or the most community building inclusive way of doing it. And I think we kind of run out of time to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of those, but that can be uh, something that we converse about on uh, through email mm -hmm. and leading up to our next meeting, perhaps be ready to make a decision about that. Uh, okay. Is there any additional uh, business that you think we need to do? Maybe we need to figure out, oh my gosh, we need to figure out when, when to meet in the last week of the month, which is the month that the mayor has said works best for us. And I don't think we have, we wouldn't be able to arrive at this decision without the full body here. Mm -hmm. So I think another doodle poll is in order. And in it, I, I, I'm not sure how to do this, but I think we need to also make sure people have the opportunity to lay out their limitations. I can never meet this day, or I 
you know, these are the times that I'm usually available uh, so that we can construct the doodle poll in a more informed way. So are you thinking the week of June 20th or the week of June 27th? Which week are you? Um, he said the 4th. The 4th? Yeah. Okay, so that's the 23rd? Oh, sorry, the week of June 20th. Okay, June 20th. Yes. Um, June 20th is holiday. On a Thursday. No, on a, uh, Monday, June 20th. Okay, so maybe we could just... Are you willing to stay five more minutes yes. just to take a poll uh, right here about what days you cannot ever come? All right, let's go around the room. Can't. All right, raise your hand if Monday is never a day that you can come. Okay. Are you talking specifically of the 20th of June? Well, we're, we're talking about the fourth week. So, I mean, we're going to be planning out so that you can save the date and any conflicts that you might have, you know, will be, you don't need to worry because that date's always set. We need a set time, set day of the fourth week of the month. And there can't be any meetings over here. Okay. And there can't, and that's why you suggest. So the this. 21st is up. That's the public safety committee meeting. Thank you. So that's, you said a. Um, that's a Tuesday. Okay. 21st. Okay. So that we can't have. So, but that's at what time? Um, five. Five. So it would, okay. Somebody who can uh, crack this nut better than me needs to speak up because I, I don't feel that I have the capability of pulling this all together in five minutes. Does anybody have any suggestions well, about how to go about this? Why don't we just schedule the next meeting? Okay. You know, and okay. short term goal. All right. And, you know, because again, as we're moving into summer, right. Um, People vacation. Yeah, you know, it may be something that at least for the short term, we want to do on a month by month basis. That's true. And okay. You know, because people's schedules. Yeah. yeah. But the, but the other the question yeah, is included. time. Are we likely to be more inclusive if we make it after work hours that many people mark as five o'clock? Pardon? I would love a flat. Okay. okay. How about that? Do we have consensus yeah. about that? Yes. So we'll say the. Now we have to think about the day. Why not June twenty second, which is a Wednesday? Okay. At five. Oh yeah. Not actually. All right. Second at five. Very good. Very. Kurt, does that work for you? And we can do it. Yes, right it does. That'll be two o'clock. For me that day. So yes, on a Wednesday, I'm okay. How long are you in California? I'm in California for eight weeks. Oh, nice. Yes. Whereabouts in California? <laughs> I'm in Monterey. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, I gotta we tell have... you, it's cold. It's it's cold here and it's yeah. warmer in Plattsburgh. My goodness. Well, thank you all. Thank you all so much for your participation. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, Michelle, oh, well, you know about the time, but one short term goal. Yes. It was just a personal thing. But we just don't use paper anymore. That is I mean, excellent. I mean, I really did this guiltily, but. Yeah, if, I mean, everyone has a phone. Can we agree? that we will not have any paper documents. I I have have minutes. Minutes. Sometimes. Well, yeah, that's, that's not something that's given out. At the, right. I mean, we can have the minutes distributed, right. you know, by email and everyone can read them ahead yeah. of time. Okay. So we have reached, have we reached consensus about that? Are those who don't prefer it, are you willing to give in to the group? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can print your own maybe? Print your own. Yeah, 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 people can certainly print their own. Yeah. Right, we just don't supply. That would, yeah. Excellent. Because again, there's always going to be waste and I'm just going to- There you go. Well, there's recycling. a recycling container by the office. Oh, that's new. Yeah. Well, it's been in place since 2019.
<laughs> so the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Is there a list for emails? I don't think I'm on the email list. Oh, um, well, actually, it's the task force is a is a body that was appointed by the um, Common Council. Mm -hmm. So we share emails okay. about business, but everything else will be available to the public. And uh, so when you say everything else, all the, all the news of what we're doing, uh, publicizing our meeting, the minutes, all of that okay. is all going to be public information. So you can send me an email. Okay. Okay. Do we want to also just put that on Instagram, put the minutes on mm -hmm. Instagram, and sure. then we're on to the next meeting? Mm -hmm. So when the minutes are done,